Okay, rain drops. Yes. Welcome to another edition of the Love and Marriage After Show. So look, Detroit premiered today. So I could not do this episode without a native of Michigan. Listen, he may be from Pontiac, but it's still the D. And after tonight's episode of Huntsville, y'all are going in on my boy, Maurice J. Scott. So welcome him to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Maurice? What's going on, Carlos? Hey, it's a rough day out here. Rough oh. crowd. <laughs> How does it feel to know that you once started out as being the one? <laughs> Maurice, I don't know what you're expecting, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Everyone loves Maurice so sweet. Maurice is great. These past few episodes, especially tonight after we saw the meeting between you, Kimmy, and Kaiwa. People are thinking you are a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I heard that before. Uh, who is it? Some guy. That Maurice needs to grow up a little bit and focus on being a supporter instead of a dictator. Mm. A dick with a K. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's really familiar with your show and does some reviews. He he came up with a dictator Nah, <laughs> I don't think I'm a dictator. Hey, the way things are going, I'm not getting enough tating. I just might be a dick all the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Carlos, listen, man. I don't know if this is going to be like a regular coffee, you know, chill out type of interview, or if we, hey, listen, I'm prepared for war too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this might be loving war, Huntsville. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, man. What? Wait a second. Is that a what is that a saw? What is no, it's a sword, man. It's a sword. It's 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 for drinks though. You know, you pop it off and then I might have to drink a little in this interview. <laughs> you make a lot of money, Maurice. How much did that cost? Uh it's not that expensive. I can just say that the everyday man can afford it. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'm the everyday man, but let's just say that is a sight to be seen. I have never seen a sword that was filled. What what type of liquor is that? Is it is it Hennessy? It's brandy. It's brandy. Uh, are you a brandy drinker? I'm actually a gin drinker. I had to graduate to gin. That's like, right, exactly. I had to graduate to gin. Gin is like a, an adult drink. You don't drink that unless you either ain't got no money in you in college or... <laughs> You got some money and, you, and you're doing all right in life. <laughs> it's either or, no in between. Well, Maurice, you are doing all right in life. Congratulations on another season. We got to get into what's been happening between you and Kimmy this season because I don't know if you have been aware of a lot of people now giving you the side eye, Maurice J. Scott, but... When it comes to your, how can I say this? Philosophy, right? Okay. On love, marriage, and war. Your brother, Marceau, has been known as the caveman. Mm -hmm. And everybody <clears throat> thought that you were the complete opposite of your brother. Although some people said, look, they were raised in the same household, they're brothers, so they must have similar philosophies. What's happening now is people are thinking that you're as much as a caveman as Marcel. So what do you have to say about all of that? I don't think that I'm a caveman. I think that traditional men have a perspective. And we kind of grew up, well, part of my life was... was um, in a traditional household. My dad did, you know, went to work. He did all of the uh, outside. And my mom, she basically raised us, you know. And same then, here, by the way, Detroit um, yeah. father. So, so, so my so, exact same concept. So when Carlos, you know, is married with children, he's going to feel the exact same way that we do. <laughs> How do you know I don't feel that way already? But go ahead. <laughs> hey, um. I'm thinking about my look at Dustin type of answer. <laughs> Who's also from Detroit. Well, he's from Flint. So he's from, see, listen, man, when you're from the Mitten, bro, you just got it. 
it's evident, man. And you know what, Carlos? Before I finish my answer, I want to give you your flowers, right? I remember when we first started and we were saying, Carlos, you need to get yourself out there, man. You're really that guy. And we were pushing, hey, Carlos, get out there, get out there. You're that guy. And I felt like a, a Tyler Perry type of, of energy from you. And I'm like, man, this let people know. It's one thing to pop your shit, right, when you ain't doing shit. It's a different to pop it when you actually doing it. You can roll up on Carlos shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're that dude, bro. <laughs> You're that dude. And, and, and for real, it's Thank you, inspiration brother. for people coming behind you. It's really inspiring. Thank you, Maurice. I love you, man. I I, I appreciate that. Um, look, you are telling the truth. And one thing about me, and you guys know this, when we started the show, I was so busy on making sure the company grew, the show grew, being invested in, in the work. And I think the moment I started <clears throat> to, like you said, take advantage of the momentum, I had no idea it would explode the way it has. And it, it's been it's been fun. It's been very courageous, as 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 you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's been um it's been good. So no, like I said, you and your brother um, have always said that to me, and I appreciate that. So thank you for that, man. I really appreciate it. Most definitely. Now, getting back to this, you know, two-parent household, right? <laughs> was, we, growing up in like that two-parent household, um, you just see a, a, a system that works, right? And ultimately, it's uh, the one thing I can say for me is I think I, I listen to Kimmy's side, and I listened to uh, Kyle's side when we were married as well. But, you know, I'm going to eventually make the, the final decision as far as which way it's going to go. So um, I know that may ruffle a couple of feathers, but that is what it is. No, one thing I don't know if people know this, and we'll talk more about this at the reunion. Um, oh, I am obsessed with straight black men's podcast. Hmm. because I, like you said, we both grew up with Black fathers who were the head of the household, you know, very traditional, brought home the bacon. Our mothers were housewives. They took care of the family because we both come from large families of, of siblings. And I'm always interested in how straight Black men think, which is why I'm able to do the job that I'm doing, right? Because I love to get the perspective. One thing that I'm realizing in my research if you want to call it but i i love it you know i'll i'll give them shout outs like earn your leisure was more about finance um but even relationship podcast i'm obsessed with how black straight men think and the reason why i think love and marriage huntsville is the number one show and own congratulations is because it's an opportunity for the world especially women to hear how men are thinking and one thing I've learned through watching these podcasts and even watching this show and, and knowing you guys, you guys are very traditional. Mm -hmm. And what I find interesting is at the end of the day, your wife married you knowing you had these traditions. So let me ask you this, because you obviously, I mean, you graduated valedic valedictorian law school, which I can't even fathom I, like, bro, I can't fathom what mm -hmm. that must feel like to know that as a black man from Pontiac, mm -hmm. humble beginnings to graduate, not number two, valedictorian of law school is, right. is, is an accomplishment like no other. What I want to talk to you about, though, is when it comes to the perception that people have of how straight black married men should act and behave. Why do you think it's such a hot topic when men say, I want things designed in this way based on tradition, not knowing that, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a large amount of women who want that as well. They may not be as loud with it, but they want it. Yeah, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying. Um, Look at how many, th this is this is the dynamic that nobody really wants to talk about, okay? And we, we can bring it all the way back. It's a system that was designed to separate black families 
That's something relatively, if we go back through time, that's something that's relatively new, right? Even in slavery, people were getting married and families were getting torn apart for that very reason, right? But even post-slavery, the Black family lived together, grew together, everything. It's like 70s and beyond is when you start seeing a whole bunch of uh, breaking up of the family. And systematically, that's when the attack happened, right? If you look at the demise of African-American families, that happened from the 70s on. And I'm a 70s baby, right? Mm -hmm. um, so to see that, there, when we look back, we see a whole bunch of tradition on television, right? Even in the early 80s, the Cosby show was a really big show because you saw you saw successful Black families going through life. Now, you're not going to have a, a situation where you're problem free. You're going to have problems no matter what. But how do you deal with it, you know, from two different perspectives? But now what we've seen is a meteoric rise in Black women as the head of household. They're responsible for everything. Mass incarceration has led to a lot of this, right? So they... They've grown a dual responsibility, mother and father. So, yeah, they want that weight taken off of them. However, they've grown enough strength to be aware. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be barefoot and pregnant because I can go make some bread, right? Um, yeah, and when you're coming into this household, it's not acceptable because I look at your finances and I don't know if you're going to be the one that's going to lead us in this financial department. So they actually have some much more awareness and um, they've been responsible for so much more that now they're just not taking just whatever. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now you just can't say whatever to black women, but they still don't want to carry the load by themselves. Well, Nobody. Kimmy, yes. And Kimmy said on my podcast, she said that when it comes to her decision, obviously getting married later in life, is because she was a single mom. You know, Jalen's father obviously is in his life to some degree, but for all intents and purposes, Kimmy was the head of her household. When she met you, she wanted she wanted something traditional. And mm -hmm. she said that, and, and, and I don't want to misquote her, so you tell me if when I do. Um, but she says something along the lines that I'll paraphrase. She said that when y'all first met, you said to her, something along the lines of you can do everything on your own. Why do you need me? Or like something about um, I'm a traditional man and I like mm -hmm. certain things, but I, I I think that may be a problem. We, we may be at an impasse when it comes to that. And she said, she said to you like, no, I like being a woman. I want mm -hmm. a traditional man. Can you mm -hmm. talk to me about that? Because obviously this is your second marriage. Mm -hmm. When you decided to proposed to Kimmy after dating for what was it seven years? Yeah, close to seven years. Cl close to seven years. What made you decide to go there and propose to her after waiting seven years of dating her? Was it because you wanted to take things slow? Was it because you really wanted to navigate like, I need to know if me and this woman are on the same page based on our traditions? I'm going to tell you, I think there's a couple different things. Number one is your your memory is really, really good, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, in essence, I was I told Kimmy that, you know, we're not going to be compatible because you want to lead. Right. And I, I didn't have the foresight at the time to see that she had to lead. Not that she wanted to. She actually had to. If she didn't lead, who was going to lead? You know, um, so. She said that she didn't really want to, but if you're going to take the lead, then brother, you're going to have to be a good ass leader because I've been leading, right? So I understand that perspective. Um, and I think that that strengthened the dynamic because with the understanding that she's a leader already, that means that you have to be on your P's and Q's about your decisions. Now, mind you, every decision that we have, there may be some clashing of decisions, uh, but it has to be a sharp. You have to think your way through these decisions, you know? And all of my decisions, even the ones that come on TV, uh, they can be challenged. You know, um, the whole uh, thought process of, of bringing Kiowa down here so that I can raise my son was one that, oh, my God, I, I never thought we were going to get that kind of blowback behind that decision. But 
you know, everybody says what they do. You know, every every woman says, I really want my my uh, baby's dad to have a role in his life or I really want him to do whatever for his kids until he's really to do whatever for his kids. That was a whatever type of decision. Right. Mm, so, I see what you're saying. Um, mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You see the, yep. the, the dynamic and it's like, mm, I'll pay for a whole house for me to have my son and raise him if it makes it easier. Right. Um. That's one side of it. The other side is uh, <clears throat> when you look at a woman, and this is this is for just in general, in audience, whatever. Okay, if you look at a person, not just a woman, but if a guy, I'm looking at it from a guy's perspective. If a guy looks at a woman, and it looks like a million dollars is laying on the ground, and everybody's walking past it, you kind of want to know why are people walking past that, All right? Mm -hmm. At first, you're like, is it really a million dollars? And then you go over it and you start thumbing through the money. And the next day you bring one of those testers and you start testing the, the money. This is real. After what? Is this a setup? Should I pick this up? You know, they watching whatever you, you're starting. You, you're going through your mind like, why is this here? That's kind of the way I felt when Kimmy like. She got to be the crazy. It has to be something that's going on. Why is this so good and it's not off the market? Ah. Uh, okay, I'm following. I'm following. So it was it was Kimmy was too good to be true. Absolutely. And and what you wanted to, <laughs> This is why, listen, I am not a straight black man and this is why I make sure to listen to um this show, you guys, the podcast I listen to, because I, I like to make sure that I, I have a vast view of how people think. Um, one thing I've learned about men is they're waiting for the shoe to is they're waiting for the shoe to fall off. Like you too good to be true. When is the crazy side gonna come? Now look, you, you now look, you, you did wait seven years, brother. And I think, in, I think <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I think I think I think in three years we could have known that. Welcome to my world. It's typical. But, but to each his own, obviously you were married prior. So mm -hmm. again, who wants to get married twice and, and mess up that one? Ask mm -hmm. Steve Harvey. He he talked to us about that. So now that we have this blended family, Kaiwa is back on the show this season. You're When we first met Monster, Monster was this cute kid, mm -hmm. right? Like this cute kid mm -hmm. who was just trying to figure out this this stepmom that he had in terms of this is my new normal. This man is now a teenager. He's a he's a man. Mm -hmm. Um. First of all, before I get to the question, a lot of people are upset that y'all still call him monster, mm. and they yeah. they want they want you to stop calling this black man monster. What do you have to say about that? Monster is a very polarizing figure, right? And if if they call 50 Cent Monster. Everybody was like, man, Monster out here doing it. Right. <laughs> if 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 you see somebody on the on a, a football field, you say he's balling, they call him a monster. If you see a tycoon out here in business, they call him a monster. It's polarizing because you can also see a person in prison, and they'll call him a monster. All right. At the end of the day, my son is getting the input from not just me. But everybody around him is successful. He's going to be a monster. He's already a monster, too. So the way you see the word monster is not the negative connotation of he's a he's a but it's fine. I, I'm about to say beast, but beast can also be seen a positive way. So mm -hmm. monster is not that he's this um, perceived um, murderer gang or like this, this horrible person. You see it more as my son is a monster because he's going to become a beast in business and in in his life and and create his own you know wealth based on the foundation that we left so that's the reason why the name became what it was absolutely it it, it well it initially started out as daddy's little monster and then the daddy's little part dropped off so then it was like he just it just it stuck you know, a threatening force. These are some of the definitions of monsters. So I want people to know a threatening force. 
a person of unnatural or extreme ugliness, deformity, wickedness, or cruelty, one that is highly successful. That's a definition of monster. Look it up, Merriam-Webster. So it's polarizing. He's going to be highly successful. We'll check back in on reality with the king in about 10 years. Ah! All right, y'all? <laughs> Meet me back here in 10 years. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you this. Today, we're, what, two days past 6 22 Okay. I'm in a different world right now, guys. God let Kimmy live. Con and, 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 and congratulations on that. So it's the, is it, oh my, is it, is it a year or two years? It's a year. It's that, been it's one year. All of this in one year. In one year. I'm like, bro, I'm on 12 right now. I'm on so, 12 right now. So my audience knows June 22nd is when Kimmy found out she was diagnosed with breast cancer. We are celebrating a year later that our girl is cancer free. And and it's, 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 it, I don't know why it, it seemed like it was long ago, but it's been a short year. But it goes to show you God's favor and grace and mercy on Kimmy's life. And it's just it's beautiful to to even acknowledge that, and we're going we're going to keep acknowledging that. Um, going back to Monster, talk to me about the the conversation you and Kimmy had today while y'all were at the painting scene in tonight's episode, where she strongly feels that Monster doesn't have enough chores to do that helps her out that what you're doing is giving him these boot camp activities to where he has to wake up at 5, 5.30 in the morning and do these exercises. And the exercises that Kimmy wants him to do includes washing dishes and, and helping clean up the crib. So and you seem to struggle with that. Why is that a struggle? Is it because, let's have an honest conversation. Mm -hmm. Is it because I, like you, grew up in a household to where my, me included, me and my mm -hmm. six brothers were not responsible for cleaning. My sisters were. We were responsible for shoving the snow, taking out the trash, and doing "quote unquote" manly stuff. Is that your thought process when it comes to your son? Um, not really, but I, I, I can, I can understand how that could be perceived, right? It's just not, I'll be honest with you, man. The clean the cleanliness of your room is not that high on my list, right? Uh, you getting good grades in school, that matters because that's something that people in the outside world make judgment calls on, right? You performing well when you in whatever you do, right? I'm working on the training as far as behaviors are concerned. And if you keep your room clean or not. That doesn't necessarily translate over into other things. Now, if I see studies that say cleaning up your room is going to help you get better grades, hey, we're starting at the room getting clean, right? Uh, if cleaning up your room is going to help you pursue your dreams more, then, hey, let's start with the room. But to me, I think that there's a training for hard work that I want Monster to understand that, listen, it doesn't matter what you do. And Carlos, you know firsthand. Every single thing that you do and any idea that you have, it comes a ton of work for years before someone says, oh, you're an overnight success. Yes. And that's that's the mentality, I think, uh, that I would like for him to have just because in this world of Instagram and Insta fame, right, mm -hmm. you don't feel like you might have to put in the work to, for longevity. And I think that I need him to understand that if he builds it and he builds the character for success, then he'll be all right. We'll make sure the room is clean when you get the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he gets the money, he'll hire uh, housekeeping. <laughs> like we ain't got a housekeeper. Because <laughs> we do. That means somebody wants to outsource some of this work. Just saying. Molly the maid at your service. Uh <laughs> <laughs> What are the most controversial things that's happening this season as it relates to you and your, your wife is the fact that what we know based on the show is you are a very sexual person. You like to have sex, if not every day, multiple times a day. Last season, you got read for filth, my brother, because on the, on the, on the couple's trip with Dr. Francis while y'all were packing, 
you pretty much made a big stink about not getting banged every day, right? Like you mm -hmm. want to have sex every day. Your wife obviously is going through chemotherapy radiation. Um, mm -hmm. Her libido isn't the same. Mm -hmm. um, you and her had a scene in the car where she admitted to you that she sometimes fake it. Now, mm -hmm. as a man, mm -hmm. national television, mm -hmm. how did it feel to know that the world is now witness to the fact that your wife admitted that sometimes she fakes her orgasms? Hey, Carlos, this is before I get there. What I'm not going to let you do is compound questions anymore. That was good, though. What it was I good. Do? So, I did. I did. Listen, am I, I did. Pulling, am I pulling a Scott on a Scott? <laughs> oh, no, this is a Carlos on me. This, you did this to me on a reunion. Let me tell you something. I, I didn't object then, and I'm going to object now. Okay. Come on, credit what after hours continue. <laughs> listen. Number one, the first time when we had that conversation with Dr. Francis, that's that was before, right? That was before we found out that Kimmy had cancer. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. I no, I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like it's both. No, absolutely. I was giving context in terms of prior to the cancer okay. diagnosis, you were very sexual. So I wanted to add context that um knowing that she's going through this, her libido isn't the same. You mm -hmm. obviously still want sex, but she's saying to you that sometimes she flips it over, rubs it, so you can finish. And yes. after you finish, she fakes a moan. Listen, let me tell you, she faked a moan <laughs> all the way in between two, I guess. All right. So what we're not gonna do is act like she's she's just faking at the end. <laughs> faking the whole way through. She faked when she turned over. I'm like, what is this? Hey, listen, and by the way, I'm gonna tell you. I, I, I realize that I've now married an actress, right, the whole time, because it seemed just like other times. <laughs> so <laughs> that while I'm getting it more early on, I, I guess, you know, who knows? You know what? I can't speak for her. I can't speak for her. <laughs> Carlos, this is... I this am is loving this interview. You have no idea. <laughs> this is context for Dr. Francis' situation, too. I was looking for a compromise. I didn't want to go to couples therapy because I knew what was going to happen. Other people's problems were going to get forced into our relationship. And then it was going to be those uncomfortable moments that we're talking about their problems. Right. So I was like, listen, if I'm drained at this at this uh, conference, I'll be good. You can't have. Listen, you literally cannot have a bad attitude if you're having sex twice a day. It's impossible. Listen, it's such a calming force. That you just you can't you cannot be upset. Go watch the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> One of my favorite movies, by the way. Exactly. When that when I, I forgot who I think it was Matthew McConaughey was was talking to uh, Jordan and he said, "Listen, get two out and you're not gonna have you know bad decisions and anxiety." And I'm like, "Listen, this this might be a nugget for life." <laughs> you are such a Scott. <laughs> Your philosophies are <laughs> hilarious, but when people are reading you for filth because they feel like you're not understanding Kimmy's diagnosis, what she's going through, because all you want to do is make sure you get what you need. Mm -hmm. Are you that much of a sexual person to where despite what she's going through right now, you still feel like there's a happy medium in terms of her pleasuring you. This is what I'll say, because this is very difficult, right? There's a difference between wants and needs, all right? And I'm a person who actually needs sex, not a person who wants sex. Now, at times I want it, but I actually need it. So... Life throws us curveballs like what we're going through right now. And what Kimmy is doing is admirable as a spouse. To roll over and suffer through it, um, I was hoping it wouldn't be a suffering, <laughs> a sufferable moment, but she rolls over and suffers through it, fakes it all for me. Because at that moment, it's something that she completely didn't desire, right? And I kind of look at it as if, and this is, you know, all jokes aside, I look at it as her standing by me while I'm standing by her. Mm -hmm. 
So um, as difficult as it may seem, we should all feel that we would be better people and say, oh, no, I don't want or need sex for however long it takes for you to recover. But we then live in reality where that's not true. I want to ask you this. So when you say you need sex, not want it, you need it. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's things we need. We need oxygen. We need water. We need, you know, there's certain things we need in order to be able to live a, a, a healthy life. Mm -hmm. So your need for sex, talk to me about that. Like, why is it a need? Because without, when you need something and you're without it, you're going to suffer health-wise, right? We need, mm -hmm. we need things, we need vitamins, we need all those things. Why do you need sex? I need sex like Carlos needs mess. Girl! <laughs> <laughs> did not have on my bingo card that Maurice J. Scott in this interview was going to gag me to the point where I literally wasn't expecting that. You need sex like I need. Now that, look, look. <laughs> you got it? It, it? You It made the connection? I mean, look. I ain't mad at that response, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a day? Better yet, can you go a month without mess? You be like, is <laughs> hey guys, world, I need more. What are you doing here? What? Where are we at? People, we need to stop getting getting along. There's some. There's something in there. There's a little more to this story. <laughs> hey guys, let's peel back some of these layers. There's more to this story. I kind of feel like that. Hey, let's peel back these covers. There's more to this this interaction. <laughs> Yeah, you imagine like that Carlos has a show where there's 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 there's, there's no mess like there no mess there, there's like, nothing happening like there's no, there's no nothing nothing there's no controversy nowhere <laughs> what, what what does what is are we in an alternate life <laughs> <laughs> you you are funny <laughs> you look you Scott brothers y'all are something else something else i like how you reverted back to me that was good I, i'm gonna give you i now see why you are a lawyer and you were valedictorian you have a way with words which is why kimmy in tonight's episode kept saying ah, 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 ah. stop 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 <laughs> ask him because she already knows this brother gonna come with some bullshit hey. i love you for that now look mm -hmm. going back to my original question mm -hmm. that you actually made a good point <laughs> is it is <laughs> I don't know how to finish this interview. Is is your need for sex because you're unable to function the rest of the day in terms of a focus? Because I really, because I'll be real with you, mm -hmm. I live a life of peace. <laughs> 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 but 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 when it comes to everything that happens outside of just me. It is messy and it's fun. It's fun. But and and, and I like it. I ain't gonna mm -hmm. front I like it. So is is that how sex is for you? Like you are you able to have a good day, but sex makes it a better day. Absolutely. I think I think I think life without sex would be like black living life in black and white. Right? If all we did was live life in black and white, we didn't make it through. Right. I look at your I look at the, the, the shoes on your shelf back there. Right. What if they were all just black and white? It doesn't add the color to those Louboutins. Why is it so important at the bottom? The soul is red. Right. You know what I'm saying? Why is it so important that the soul is red? We call it bloody shoes. You know what I mean? So color sex, sex is is one of the most powerful driving forces here on Earth. If we actually give it credit for what it is. Right. And most men, most men wouldn't be the aspirational men that they are if they weren't driven by 
women, the beauty of women, like it drives men and women. Hell, women are like, oh my God, look at her. She's got it. Like, and don't forget stuff. the gays. The gays. Listen, I'm 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 gonna agree with you. Mm -hmm. Men love women and, and, and it does something for them. Women, let me tell y'all something. Women look good for other women. Women don't look good. A man don't care if you're dressed a designer. He don't care if your shoes or, or none of that. Your hair is real. Women dress for other women and women like to look at women, which is why you see an equal distribution of women and men in strip clubs. And speaking as a gay man, we love women. Mm. We we love we love Beyonce not because of her vocal cords, which we do, because she looks good and we love a woman who looks good. So I, I'm with you. Continue. It, listen, it, it's, it's God's, to me, it's God's most beautiful creation, right? They come in all shapes, sizes, colors, everything, right? And you know, the funny thing is, me and Kimmy, we both didn't really, we didn't like light skin. Like, my preference was tall, dark skin, long hair, right? And that was the preference, but I dated all spectrum. It was just beauty. Women are just so beautiful. So um, the fact that, you know, you have all of these different varieties and you have this beautiful creation of God is made on earth. If you can imagine living life in black and white versus color, that's what it's like. I like color. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, I love color. <laughs> Do you color inside the lines or outside the lines? Always in the lines, color. <laughs> I'm so <dead. laughs> You good. I don't know you to catch that. <laughs> good try. <laughs> you I, are smart. I didn't know if you are going to catch that. If I would have asked Martel that, Martel would have said both. Martel <laughs> <laughs> would like, I color on the back of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get nothing past you. You said, Carlos, I ain't stupid inside the lines. Yeah, inside, uh -huh. the line, inside the ones I created, I done drew these lines out. So I traced the lines three times before I started my coloring. <laughs> and I shaded directly near the lines and then filled in the interior. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Okay. What's the longest you've been without sex? The longest I've been without sex was six months. I did six months. I did six months. Why? I thought I was going to die of AIDS. But I was like, you know what? You this is Wait, what? Why, why did you think that? <laughs> it, was, I, it was a lot. It was a lot. And it was like right after college. Uh, right after college, I was at it, bro. And it was like, all right, you know what, Maurice? You might you might be out of control. And I needed to see if I actually had control over myself. And then I gave it some time. And plus, I wanted to be closer to God. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, some of the stuff- Because you used to be, <laughs> not that it's funny. I'm not laughing because of that. I'm laughing because I'm, I'm remembering what Marcel said. You used to be a pastor or something, right? Yeah, a deacon. A deacon. A deacon. Sure, yep. Yeah. As a deacon at the church, as, you know what's funny? I was just thinking about this just the other day because Monster just started his first job and he's working for Scope. And I was like, man, I dropped this kid. I, I remember his first day. I remember the first day being there. And this is, the, you know, all these times where I'm present. First day, his first, uh, the first time he walked and the first time he walked actually was at church across the pulpit. That's the first steps that he took were at church across the pulpit. First day of school and first day uh, uh, of his first job, I'm dropping him off. I'm like, man, these are milestone moments. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, I used to be a deacon at the church and uh, and uh, I was trying to get closer to God. So I had to give up some things and uh, that didn't last that long. <laughs> I just, I said, this was a long time. Six, it was. It, it felt like forever. It felt like seven years. But uh, <laughs> after a while, I was like, God knows my heart. <laughs> he know who he created. <laughs> let's not go against. Let's not go against anything that he already created. He knows this. He he put this in me. <laughs>
<laughs> I love this interview so much. Okay, so going back to tonight's episode, this the episode ended in a very intense conversation between you and Kimmy. Mm -hmm. Um, you made a comment to Kimmy that um she needs to work on her past issues with Kaiwa in terms of that's how y'all collectively would get to a better place. Kimmy emphatically said that's the past and she has no desire to go to the past. And you made a comment along the lines of, oh, so you don't want to change or you don't want things to get better. And Kimmy and the world looked at you crazy. Explain to me what you meant by your desire to really want Kimmy and Kaiwa to be on the same page because do you think that will help this collective Ray's monster to be the best person he can be? This is the unfortunate thing, right? <clears throat> Most people look at it like monster 16, he's almost out the house. Um, you know, why are they, why is he even trying to force this whole situation? All right. And the truth of the matter is there's going to be moments in time where, and I look at it for the long run, the long haul, right? My parents divorced a long time ago. Guess what? They still show up at all of our events. All of them. So if me and Kimmy are going to be married for the rest of our lives, right? And Kiowa is going to be married for the rest of, our, of, of their lives, right? We need to get together and have a commonality as far as what's the best for Monster. Because we're going to be at all the events. We might as well get along, right? We might as well have some type of commonality where we can trust and lean on each other because co-parenting is really a thing. It's a thing forever. Now, when the grandkids come eventually, don't we need to have good relationships then too, right? So I'm looking at it as far as a longevity perspective. And I think that a lot of people, they look at me side-eyed, right, with some of my conversations. They they may be looking at the moment rather than, hey, this is for the long haul, right? And I, I never, ever wanted a whole situation where, you know, I have the, the stereotypical baby mama, baby daddy relationship, right? And as a matter of fact, I don't think I call Kaiwa ever my baby mama. That was my ex-wife, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> right. That's the mother of my child. You see what I'm saying? Because I look at it from a different perspective. This is this isn't just some this isn't just someone passing. This is actually my child's parent. They hold a, a, a very important role and responsibility in his development and his life. So, um, yeah, I'm pushing for that. You know, I'm pushing for that, and I really want to make sure that. I do whatever I can to foster that relationship because it's important to me. No, and we'll see the continuation of that conversation next week. In addition to, we get to see Kimmy follow Maurice's advice and she sits down with Kaiwa and we get to see how things end from that. So look, it's one of the things about this season that I love a lot is the fact that it goes to show you that how we started this show with Monster being a kid and how you guys had a conversation about blended families. Six years later, it's still the conversation because at the end of the day, he's now a teenager. Mm -hmm. And there's certain rules that applies to that. And I love the fact that you guys are allowing yourselves to have these conversations. I mean, everybody, everybody applauded you and Kimmy for being in that car, having the combo about her desires of sex not being met with yours because it was something that people don't talk about. And I re remember watching that scene where he's like, I had no idea that when a woman goes through chemo radiation, she doesn't feel sexy or pretty. She lost her hair. Some women lose their breasts. Y you know, the, 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 the situation that you have to go through mentally. And I, I appreciate the fact that you two have not allowed those conversations to be not had um, mm -hmm. based on the sensitive nature of it. Because again, you you know this social media world now. I'm pretty sure you knew like, all right, they're going to get me, but I, I, I got to be myself. And one thing I will say, there's more to come of this conversation because um, as I'm watching further episodes of the season, uh, Maurice 
doubles down on it. So state, <laughs> he's wearing a helmet, talking about his helmet. So we <laughs> <laughs> It's this conversation goes to another level. There's more to come. Maurice, I'm so happy that we have this conversation. I wanted to wait to talk to you while we sort of saw what was going on with you and Kimmy and tonight's episode with Kaiwa. And it's more to come, y'all, when it when it when we talk about the fact that this is a big issue in their storyline this season that is super relatable. Thank you, Carlos, for having me. And I just wanted to say, man, the D is up next. Yes, love and marriage, Detroit. So listen, he's he's represented with his Lions gear. Uh, we need the Lions to do better in football, you know. Oh, this is our year, bro, for real. Ugh. For real. It, listen, I'm telling you, we about to be – the world knows the D is up next. And that's not just for the ladies. Ah, and by the D, you don't mean yours. You, th that's not up next. You mean no, no, Detroit. Not my okay. D. Detroit is up next. Okay. <laughs> that's just my D. Ah. <laughs> because that's in this case, the D is silent. All right. So, Maurice, let the world know where they can find you, follow you, support you. Credit One, you guys also have your closing attorney and all this other stuff. So, yes. tell us about that. Okay, United Legal Team, we do consumer law and we do uh, closings. So like anything that has to do with credit, we out here suing banks, we sue the credit reporting agencies. If they have inaccurate information on your credit and you can't get your house or whatever, guess what? We'll sue you. We'll sue, we'll, we'll sue for you, okay? Uh, we also help people close. Um, when you're purchasing a home or you're purchasing uh, a commercial residence or whatever, uh, we can help you facilitate your closing. OK, um, and we have a great partnership that we've built with a lot of real estate agents and mortgage brokers that refer business to us. And we're really excited about that as well. Um, and the name of the company you can find us is uh, United Legal Team on the Web. Um, you can find me, Miami Reese, on Instagram and I'm Maurice Scott, Miami Reese on, on Twitter. So thanks. And hey, raindrops, do me right after this episode now. <laughs> I gotta get I gotta get my own tribe, man. I'm gonna find I know, out. We gotta I... name yours. I, yeah, I, I, gotta will, name. I I think yours should be called the dictators. Dictator. Mm. Dick with a K. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a double time drop because at the end of the day, listen, everybody knows that you're one of the smartest people on the show. Like you're very smart. So you're a dictator at your job. You're you're the smartest in the room. And when it comes to in the big room, you rule with an iron fist. Let's just call it that. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, listen, that that could all be in my world. Obviously, it's not in Kimmy's. <laughs> She's giving me, I don't know what, uh silver screen in the big room. <laughs> More to come, and we'll, I'll see you at the reunion, brother. You be good, man. All right, take it easy.